Throughout history, surfers have proven themselves to be an intrepid group of adventurers, scouting out new locations for surf, enduring grueling physical tests, and fighting other surfers for the limited resources in the waves. Of course, these obstacles aren't without their advantages, and there is nothing like the thrill of overcoming the elements to be rewarded with a great wave. In this episode of Longboard TV, we take a look at the many challenges that face surfers, whether it be nature, themselves, or other adventurers. Every year, a diverse group of athletes gather on Catalina Island to participate in one of the most grueling activities on the open ocean, a 32-mile paddleboard race called the Catalina Classic. This year, a field of 69 contestants woke up pre-dawn in early September at the Catalina Isthmus to hit the sand for the ultimate test of a waterman's endurance. The race course requires entrance to stroke their 12 to 19 foot paddle boards from the northeast corner of Catalina Island across the Pacific Ocean to the Manhattan Beach Pier for a total length of 32 miles. The origins of the crossing from Catalina to Manhattan Beach date back to the 1930s when preeminent waterman Tom Blake and fellow Southern California surfers held the first channel races. I paddled two Catalina races, the first one I, I came in second, I was beaten by 10 seconds by Kemp Oliver. The second year, I was probably 10 miles in the lead of anyone, and I called it off due to rough condition that the, our lead boats were sinking. Well, that was the end of the Catalina race for probably 25 years. It was brought back by a buddy Bonnie Gibbon Gibson in 82, and uh, after about 10 years, so right around 80 or 95, uh, it jumped around 75 people, and uh, the race has been about 70 people ever since. Take off at the beach right to the north side of the pier. We just go just to the north side of Ship Rock. Shipping lanes is right in the middle. Then you get the R10 buoy, and then from the R10 buoy in, it's kind of like your backyard. That you know you're eight to ten miles out, and you just want to milk it in. First guy to Manhattan Pier wins. Uh, sport boat's huge, uh, you know, you need them, and uh, you need your nutrition out there, but you also need someone to give you the right course. Guys uh, have the water bottles filled up with their nutrition, and, they, and the guys going for the win aren't stuffing. They are drinking through a straw as they actually paddle. Each contestant is required to have a support boat to help keep them on course, and to provide them with the necessities they need to finish the race, whether it be food, water, or even an ice dump. The 32 miles from Catalina to Manhattan Beach covers some truly treacherous open ocean, and paddlers have to be cautious of whales, blue and mako sharks, and large pods of dolphins, as well as man-made obstacles like tankers along the shipping lanes, all while trying to stay focused on their race. fall into the more prone pattern. Like the top guys, they're on their knees a lot more and pounding, and, and if the water's flat, in good conditions, they'll spend a lot more time on their knees. And that's a faster stroke, and you get so much more speed out of it. After the 24 miles across open ocean, each paddler's beacon of hope is the bright red R10 buoy, which signals that competitors are approximately eight miles from the finish. It's at the R10 that paddlers either gain momentum or fizzle out. 
Los Angeles County lifeguard Ryan Addison used the R10 as a chance to open up a huge lead over the rest of the field. Fellow paddlers tried to hammer home the last stretch of the race, but in the end, the gap built up by Addison proved insurmountable. There's a list of great watermen who have done it. The bottom line is just finishing this race is brutal. In a near record time of 5 hours, 9 minutes and 40 seconds, Ryan won his first Catalina Classic. And to what does he credit his victory? Uh, my friends and family and Joe Bart.